I don't understand, like I really don't understand in the world how, how it can be 2009. 2009, aren't cars supposed to fly by now? And aren't we have supposed to figure it out that there is no separation? That, that you and I are connected. I mean, I, th I actually thought that the economic meltdown was a fantastic opportunity for us to understand that we are all in fact connected. The whole world is connected. And, you know, ancient teachers have said, you know, when someone is hungry, how can I be full, right? I mean, uh, great teachers have always taught that we are our brother's keeper. And that's, a, that's an idea, a law, a concept, an ethic, a morality. But if you want to get down just to the peas and carrots of it, just to the, you know, practicality, how can we elude ourselves that there is any separation between you and me, between me and the woman sitting on the street that I came across the other day. I'd just flown in, I, you know, they sent a car to pick me up, I had to get some Canadian dollars, so we're coming down Fraser, I think, and there was a little Scotia Bank. I said, oh, I'll use my ATM there. And, and uh, you know, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sober alcoholic, I've been sober for a long time, like uh, 29 years. Uh, and um, I, and I, it was 11 o'clock on a beautiful sunny morning and I was walking to the bank and there's this woman, probably my age, looking a little older, very clean, sitting on the, on the, on the sidewalk in the bus thing, literally sitting on the sidewalk with her little knapsack beside her and she's rocking. And I stop and I say, you okay, how you doing? And she says, oh, you know, I'm drunk. I'm just, I'm just a mess, I'm drunk. And I said, well, hey, you know, um, I'm sure there's an AA meeting around here, you know, you should check out AA. And she said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I, I, they just let me out of the psychiatric this morning. I'm not ready, I'm too scared. And, you know, I said, where are you going? And she said, I'm just gonna sit here. And, you know, it's like, how is she any different than me? I mean, there's no difference between her and I, except I was, I was graced with a moment 29 years ago where I understood that if I continued to drink and use drugs, that, you know, uh, that I was committing suicide in a socially acceptable form. I, I, I had a moment of grace. Why I had this moment of grace? I did nothing to earn it. You know, it's the same as I had the privilege of being born in Canada. I, you know, I, I just worked in South Africa. My best friend is South African. You know, there's a lot of poor people there too. Uh, but you know, actually their poverty is more held within the communities in, than ours is in a, in, a, in a funny way. I mean, the locations as awful as they are, are communities that are recognized and that, that have support. We, we, just, we just like dirt shove people onto the streets, sweep them into the gutters, make them go away, wash them down, send them away. Oh my God, we're having the Olympics, which I am really glad we're having the Olympics. I think the Olympics are great. But it's an opportunity like this economic meltdown to, to invest our time, our money, and to freaking wake up, wake up. How, how, many, how many years do we have to go with some illusion that these people are not us, that they are not our sons and daughters, that they are not our mothers and fathers, that they are not us. They are a reflection of us the same way as everything in this world is a reflection of us. And uh, if that's what we want to see when we look in the mirror, that is our poverty of spirit. That is our, that is our illusion of, uh, of, of, of comfort. You know, I mean, it is it's the poverty of our spirit that does not feed and clothe and house those that cannot do it for themselves.